What's up, YouTube? In this video, well, really, this this stock needs no introduction, but we're going to talk about Tesla ticker symbol T S L A, and boy, you know, earnings were quite quite interesting. If you didn't follow along, but they were uh, once once Elon opened up his mouth, it it's it really brought the stock down quite a bit. But uh, year to date, company is up 103 percent over the course of one year flat so obviously tesla reported their earnings yesterday and uh sent the stock down quite a bit lower i believe about eight percent if i remember correctly we can actually take a peek right here we can see it's down nine percent nine point three percent uh after it closed today so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at their financials combine them all throw all those financials into a calculator and find a fair market value of tesla with their most recent uh, pricing and all that other stuff. So let's get started in the financials here. Revenue, gross profit, net income. We can see revenue growing, gross profit beginning to turn negative and net income. We can see right here, kind of same thing, starting to flatline, starting to turn negative a little bit, which we kind of expect because, you know, obviously the, the auto industry, people aren't really willing to pay you know, whatever interest rates are on cars these days, if it's 10%, 11%, I'm not real sure, but you know, it, uh, it's a lot more, it's a lot different than the five, 6% that they were not long ago. Gross margins, uh, margins are shrinking, which is one of the biggest things investors are keeping an eye on is the margins at this company because of how good the margins are on Tesla. So currently margins are shrinking and we got net margin doing the same thing, shrinking over there as well. But still good margins. You know, even though they're shrinking, they're still pretty good margins, but they are not. And even though they have reduced price cost on vehicles, like you got to look at the on the positive side too. Like, yes, they're shrinking, not ideal. But even though they've shrunk, they've reduced the price of their car. And I believe the Model Y or Model 3 now is like one of the cheaper cars, uh, uh, cheaper EVs I believe somebody can get. And it, and it makes it a little more inexpensive for somebody uh, and more likely for somebody to buy a Model 3. So margins might be down, but they're still above competition and they're doing uh, and they're still making good money on their vehicles there. Revenue, gross profit, year over year change. Um, obviously, not much of a growth uh, at Tesla right now. Return on invested capital sitting at about 20 percent. So still got good return on invested capital cash to short term debt. Uh, you got 27 and a half billion in short term debt, 23 billion in cash. They've got 38 billion total liabilities, still 23 billion in cash there. Net income to free cash flow. We are producing 12 billion in net income and 6 billion in free cash flow over the last 12 months. Free cash flow. There you go. 6 billion. Not quite a record year, but uh, could be. But sitting at about 7.5 billion is their best free cash flow so far. Share count dilution. We are still getting somewhat diluted. It has tapered off though, and hopefully we'll maintain that and maybe eventually start rolling back down lower someday. Capital expenditures, they are sitting at about 7.8 billion in CapEx. Comps, we have four other companies to compare it to. We have Neo, Rivian, GM, and BYD. Over here on Tesla, we have two red flags. Operating cash flow is higher than net income by about uh, 1.7 billion there. Share change year over year is up about 2%. Market cap on across the board here and revenue. Market cap is on the left, revenue on the right. And we can see market cap on Tesla is uh, crazy. So we're going to disregard these two graphs on here because BYD actually is not in USD right now. It is in uh, whatever. It is in a different currency. So we'll hop over here to the growth rate. So this is these are five-year growth rates here. GM looking at uh, not much of a growth. Tesla looking at decent growth. But NEO looking at pretty substantial growth. Rivian also in pretty good growth range byd there is no current growth that is a foreign company so it is a little more difficult to find certain uh metrics on that but down here in margins where i think it's the most important we can see gross margins on tesla leading the pack byd not too far behind operating margin tesla 13 percent everybody else low sing low to mid single digits there profit margin sitting at 13 percent and byd at uh, about four and a half percent yeah and gm sitting at six percent free cash flow currently six billion in free cash flow byd sitting at four negative 42 billion this could also be that act that 
change in currency. So that might not be correct. That's probably not correct at 42 billion. But no matter what, it is still a negative free cash flow. Return on invested capital, 20%, 17% at BYD, 4.5% GM. PE, uh, Tesla's currently trading at 62.5 PE and BYD, 27.5 PE. Obviously, across the board, you can see why Tesla is obviously trading at a higher PE is because of their margins. And obviously, the future outlook of the company is uh, very, very, very um, optimistic with everything they've got going on within the company. So now let's value Tesla. Let's figure out what this could be worth today. Well, not could be what it is worth based on our on all of our calculators here. So we have Peter Lynch valuation. Peter Lynch valuation gives them a value of $70.41 per share. Multiples comparison. The only profitable company we can compare to is going to be GM here. And that gives us a price of $14.43 per share. The only thing I'm not going to include GM is because GM is currently trading at a PE of 4.1. Um, so you, uh, I, I, I kind of technically believe GM is a bit of a value trap, but so we'll, we won't put any multiples in there for comparison for our final valuation. Manual PE though, we take our market cap, a minus cash plus debt divided by cash from operations. We get 50.5 PE telling us we are very overvalued. Price the book, five-year average, 19.8, currently at 13.3, so undervalued based on that. Peg ratio, telling us we are very overvalued on peg, on current and forward-looking. Graham's valuation gives them $146.45 per share. Discount of cash flow, analysts predicted 21 or 31% growth rate. I said I figured I'll match their 31% in this instance that gives them a discounted cash flow price per share $49.24 rule 72 we have three sources for an eps growth rate for an average growth rate of 21 percent that goes into 72 3.43 times that goes into 10 years 2.92 times so we get to double our eps 2.9 times, so basically three. So I gave them a 28 for a future EPS. That gives us a fair market value today, $294.02. So final valuation over here at Tesla. We have a current trading price of $220 per share. We got a fair market value on Tesla of $112. And actually, if we delete that, so we get rid of our multiples there. That gives us a fair market value of $140.03. 30% margin safety, $98. Analyst price target, $241 per share. Now, after analysts start digesting these numbers from Tesla, I can almost guarantee that is probably coming down lower um, for a price target. I don't know that that has yet been uh, uh, adjusted. But we have priced out Tesla before, and I'll drop a link to that video as well. We can see Tesla before. We valued it at $62.88 and $44 for 30% margin safety. Obviously, numbers change day to day, and also uh, analyst per predictions also change. And obviously, we also got another set of financials added to the board, so that helps uh, with our with all these valuations as well. So that is what we're looking at for a fair market value on Tesla: thirty percent margin safety, ninety eight dollars per share. Now let's hop over to the spreadsheet or the stock chart and see how this thing is technically trading. So we have. Well, you know, we're hanging on by a thread here with this uh, this channel, this upward channel that we're in. And um, I hate to say it, but I think that thing's coming right through this channel and potentially redoing re a bit a back test of this channel here based on, um, you know, if Elon wouldn't have said some of the things he said, maybe it would give more confidence to investors or maintain confidence in, with investors. But I th I think with what he said, it's gonna it's gonna scare too many people away, and it, it, this thing's just gonna potentially uh, roll down over to like 180 ish dollars per share, which you know still seems very, very richly valued based on what we just got. But obviously, you got also you know Tesla's got a lot of things going for it, right? So one other thing we can take a look at is their most on is their earnings release too that they have. So one of the big things I want to kind of go over here was on their operational summary. So 
there's a few few things that I think are pretty important that I haven't heard anybody talk about. At least I think they're important. But nobody talked about their solar or storage, at least as far as I know, nobody that I listened to that I heard anything from. But, you know, solar sec, you know, the solar deployed here obviously isn't doing very good. And obviously anybody in the solar, anybody that's invested in the solar sector, such as like Enphase, uh, like I am, not doing very good at all. And I think actually in the pre-market, it dropped down a lot more. It's like I had $100 per share right now or something. I don't know. It's unfortunate but it is what it is storage deployed this is the one sector that is doing very very good for them is there is is their energy storage these big cubes of energy they're doing very good over here they're you know year over year they're almost up a hundred percent and nobody's really talked about that I, I understand it's a nominal number in comparison of what they're doing with their cars but i think it's something that be aware of and then the other thing too is their super supercharger stations as well you know obviously they've all they've supplied out or they've they've installed a, many more superchargers and and in my opinion you know the more superchargers could mean more trust from new customers right because one of the biggest things people complain about or are concerned about is what if you run out of a charge then what well you know people say like oh you know like that's the number one thing people complain about but the more superchargers you get installed the more people see these things the more people will trust them and also the more people that see these superchargers they're going to see the tesla logo and think like you know that logo is going to be stuck in their brain is going to it's going to drive them to tesla eventually i would think right i mean that's how i would look at it like same thing with nike you see nike's logo and you know what that is. And you're probably eventually going to buy a Nike shirt or a Nike shoes or something like that. So that logo is getting advertised everywhere based on their, because it's on the side of their superchargers. And when you see a supercharger, you think you don't just look at it and look back to the road. You look at it, you stare for a second, think that's cool. Right. So at least I do. That's what I, you know, if I see a Tesla supercharger, I think it's pretty neat. And it, uh, it draws me into want a Tesla, you know, as a consumer, right? So worth noting that obviously I don't, I didn't, again, I didn't hear anybody talk about this sec section of the business. Everybody's worried about their margins and their, how many cars are getting delivered and all these things, which it's important. But I mean, you also have to understand too, like, look at the big picture of this company, not just the macro environment of what's going on. I mean, yeah, it sucks, but it's, it's how it works, you know, and I think people get a little too caught up on the short term outlook of things and not and and forget about the long term of everything. So, but you know, that's all I got for Tesla on this one. Again, you know, I think I think this thing's going to see some lower some lower prices here in the future. I think this thing might be headed down to 185 to 190 dollars per share. Retest this downward channel or, or the back test this downtrend, and then hopefully it hits it, and then maybe well. If it does hit it, you know, maybe it's a fantastic place to potentially buy if you think Tesla fits in your portfolio at an overvalued price for sure. But obviously, we're all very well aware of what Tesla has going on within its company. And I think it's worth the uh, the the premium on it. Maybe not at $280 per share, but definitely if it reaches 180 I think that's a Pretty good buying opportunity, especially technically speaking, that would be a place to buy if it does hit that retest this trend line here. Or it could hold about $210 per share and maybe uh, bounce up higher. You know, maybe it'll do that. Hopefully it'll do that. Uh, if not, then I think that's its next pit stop is about $170 to $185 per share range. I don't know. But we'll have to wait and see. So that's what I got for Tesla for you guys. If you found value in this video, drop a like, subscribe, and comment. And we will be back later with another Stock Nails video.